Hello everyone and welcome to the first unit review of 2019. And there's only one way to really start off 2019 and that's to review the unit that is celebrating 2019 and I would consider to be the first unit, first new unit of 2019 and that is Kyudo Fina or New Year's Fina or Kimono Fina. There are many different names for her but um, She's basically kind of Japanese archery, so that's why I basically will just kind of have her as Kyoto Fina. Anyway, she is a true dual hand magic chainer slash magic finisher with restorative abilities and a few extra abilities. And we'll get into her in a second, probably a better way to say that, but uh, yeah, her animations are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, very, very, like, just like Japanese archery, which is obviously the kind of the theme here. And a very cool limit burst that looks absolutely beautiful. If you're into archers, uh, this is a great looking unit. Sprite's fantastic. And the victory animation is just so New Year's-y. It's just cute. It's adorable. Lid and Fina basically playing like a traditional Japanese New Year's activity and that's just adorable so yeah nothing not to like about this unit in terms of sprite animation so let's talk about first of all her TMR because that's always kind of the place where we start right so TMR is a bow 74 attack 145 magic I particularly like this for a couple of reasons. One, bows get pretty good passives by going into the weapon enhancement. Either for attack or magic, you can build bows pretty well with their rare abilities to get a lot of extra stats on them. So here, you know, 145 magic is great. If you actually have Lunara's Super TMR, you could potentially put it on Lunara, I don't know how much of a benefit it is because you're basically losing out a full materia slot and if you're not fighting a demon, Lunara's Super TMR doesn't really make that much of a difference. So this is definitely good for Fina. However, there probably is some better stuff out there. There's no variance on this weapon or anything, which is kind of disappointing. It would have been cool to see some variance on this, but uh, eh. Super TMR wise is a absolutely beautiful kimono, one of a kind, just for you. 45 defense, 64 magic, 45 spirit, and resists ice and light 70%. Now, the magic on this is not the highest by any means of any piece of equipment that we've seen in the game. We've seen uh, higher robes, but this also has pretty good defensive properties too, and absolutely amazing elemental properties. 70% light and 70% ice. Very, 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 very strong two elements to have resistance to, especially light resistance. So this Super TMR I think is really, really good. It also opens up uh, Fina here to have just some different attack equipment. Instead you could have uh, Medina's Super TMR. You could have some other high attack magic super TMR. You don't need uh, this so, or her bow. So the, 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 this has its good properties, not, on, not only for her, but other units too. However, I have to say that the ice and light resistance is probably the more generous of elemental resistances right now. Maybe we could see something different. I get it. Ice and light is her specialty, but come on, give us some fire darker. I don't know. I guess it depends on the trial. I'm just being... Anyway, um, moving on, let's talk about her Limit Burst. Now, her Limit Burst is really good. It is maxed out in AoE one hit, 3,450% magic attack, and that is pretty strong because this girl can hit a very high magic stat. Not only that, it debuffs 100% for Ice and Light resistance for 5 turns, and except for the caster, gives 20 Limit Burst Crystals. This is... oh. Sorry. Give me one second. Epic 7 demands it. But, uh, yes. In, I mean, her limit burst is really good for supporting a ice attack party or a light attack party. And given that there's been some really good uh, light setups I've been able to do with party composition lately, 
I'm pretty happy about this limit burst. It's just really strong. Of course, you need to max it out to get the full damage as well as the debuff on the elements. But uh, AOE wise, uh, the limit burst fill is always 20 crystals. So that's pretty good support for the entire party. Now, looking at her passives, let's just head over here for a second. This is kind of interesting. So she does have some really nice passives. She also gets some extra abilities from beating the new Final Fantasy Brave Exvius quest, which is pretty cool. Uh, since I've already beaten it, I've already unlocked it. Uh, for beating that quest, you get an extra 30% magic, two limit burst crystals per turn, and a 200% modifier naturally to basically all of her damage abilities. So that's great. Uh, she has limit burst fill rates up, which is great because her limit burst basically fills everybody else's limit burst and that's pretty handy, especially uh, depending on your team's composition and how powerful their limit bursts are. It's pretty good to have access to limit bursts constantly. She has a 20% chance to counter any physical attack with a HP heal for the party, which is nice. She naturally regens HP per turn. She can ignore a... Uh, a 50% chance to ignore one fatal attack when she's above 80% HP. A little high, but not too bad. 10% MP recovery per turn. Some extra passives for spirit, magic, all that stuff. Uh, another limit burst crystal per turn. 50% true dual hand magic naturally in her kit uh, to start. More magic buffs, natural ice and light resistance, uh, even some killers versus avian, which is really cool. There might be another killer. Uh, the data has never been properly parsed, and I think there's an error on most of the listings of it, so hopefully that gets fixed eventually. Uh, she is natural being able to use two of her abilities in a turn, which is, of course, always handy to have. She has boosts. Uh, for equipping her own TMR or Super TMR, she does get a pretty nice benefit, which is extra magic, HP, MP, and enables triple cast of her abilities at the start of the fight. 20% MP, 50% more true dual hand magic, so she's basically running 100% true dual hand magic from the start. So if you equip en enough true dual hand magic from other places, then you can pretty easily reach the cap with her. Now, looking at her kit for abilities, this is, well, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, first of all, uh, the ability that she gets for unlocking or er, for beating uh, the Final Fantasy Great Exvius quest, AoE 100% or 180% attack and magic boost for three turns, AoE 100% ice and light resistance for three turns, uh, 10,000 HP heal, AoE, and an AoE, er, heal 300 MP only to herself, sorry, uh, on a four turn cooldown available turn one. So it's a pretty powerful ability to just have, uh, boosting the entire party's damage output, protecting them from specific elements, as well as just healing the group AoE, HP, and some MP too uh, for herself. So that's all really good. MP wise, I haven't enhanced mine yet, but uh, more MP the better. She has some um, multi attacks that just hit a single target, but more interestingly, and this is the part I like, they actually heal the group. So a 3000 HP heal on one or a 30 MP heal on the other one. Not particularly strong attacks, but uh, an interesting form of support to have if you need it and you need your healer to do something else. Also in her kit, she has two forms of chaining I should talk about. First of all is AR chaining, Lunara chaining. 30 hits, you know, this framing, I this is one of my favorite types of chaining just because it works so well in Arena. And more importantly, this ability is naturally non-elemental, which is great because a lot of elemental resistance has been popping up in Arena lately. So having non-elemental AR chaining that is not physical and is magical is very useful in itself. Uh, there's almost an argument here to replace Lunara uh, permanently because this will never be banned in Arena. The only problem that you could ever have is, you know, weeks when dual cast is not available. But this chaining can do a massive amount of damage in Arena. And speaking of which, if you do like the elemental parts, well, there is a way that Vina can put element on her attacks for 
what is it? Um, it's not those abilities. Thought it was in here. Wait, she can debuff ice and light attack. Sorry, got a little bit confused. And she has a powerful form of chaining, which her other form of chaining is Chaos Wave. Now, this is both good and bad. Uh, Chaos Wave is kind of the popular form of magic chaining out there right now. Uh, and being able to, you know, debuff with one ability and then press damage with the other ability is very useful. Uh, the other thing to note here is that this one is a little bit weaker. This one's stronger and stacks damage, so it becomes more powerful over time to a total number of six extra times. By the end of it, she should be able to do a fair bit of damage. And because she has ways to give herself uh, multicasting, of her abilities, then she should be able to get up to the max damage pretty quickly. Uh, I guess her AR, I, mm, unless I misread something earlier, which is possible. Uh, I thought she had a way to permanently imbue her one of her attacks with elements, but no, I guess her AR chaining is just non-elemental, which is okay, I guess. Now, one of the abilities I do not like is her random cast ability. These abilities are never that good, mainly because they're not dependable. In the middle of the fight, you could, I mean, just hope to luck into the ability you're actually looking for, but a lot of the times it ends up being not great, especially because there's actually a 20% chance of nothing happening, apparently, or at least that's the way I read it, and that's the really scary thing, just using it and not getting an ability. However, the abilities themselves that you can potentially get are really good. A self 100 MP recovery and 10 limit burst crystal fill for Fina, while enabling access that gives an AoE 100 and I'd like to say that I would read that properly. AoE 100% HP recovery for the entire party and an AoE 15,000 HP heal uh, for three turns. Uh, another one is 150 MP heal for herself, 10 limit burst crystals, and enables access to an AoE 150% magic boost for three turns and 150% limit burst fill rate. One that gives her 150 MP and unlocks another one that is an AoE 30% damage reduction and an AoE 1500 HP barrier for three turns, basically all three turns kind of thing. And another one that gives her 150 MP and enables access to a AoE cure all ailments and 100% ailment resistance for three turns. So the abilities that they unlock and the abilities that those abilities unlock are really good, but is it dependable in a fight? Probably not, and that is a bit of a problem. But she does have a few other abilities that are super nice. Uh, she has one that powers up and gives some modifiers. You know, that's kind of the name of the game right now here on the JP side, is that there are abilities that just un or power up other abilities, and that's the thing here. Fina has also her cooldown abilities, which... Where are they? Starting right here. 100 MP is an AoE debuff, 100% for ice and light resistance for three turns, a self 200% magic boost for three turns, and enables access to quadracasting of her abilities uh, for one turn on a six turn cooldown available turn one. So this is really good to have, you know, a huge debuff on her own elements and give herself quadra casting the next turn if you use this on turn one then you can get in some damage and then just continue pressing the enemy and by the end of turn two you're already pretty much maxed out which is really good uh the her next cooldown ability 84 mp is a self 300 mp recovery with a 300 mp uh heal for three turns i think that might be split over three turns but still Self 200% modifier for some of her other abilities and also removes any stat breaks on herself, gives herself a 100% boost into break resistance uh, for three turns. This is on a six turn cooldown, available turn one. 
good basically resets her, means that she is kind of broke proof. You could even use this at the start of the fight to make sure that your damage output is pretty high and stays pretty high in case you know that the enemy... Yeah, it's 100 MP per turn. I thought as much. Very weird way the data is listed today. Next ability is a 99 MP single target 200% magic attack ignoring 50% spirit. A uh, single target 200% magic attack that ignores 50% spirit and a single target 200% magic attack with ignore 50% spirit. So basically it's three volley shots, which is kind of interesting. Also enables access to one ability for uh, one use uh, that enables access to another ability for one use as well. So, oh, okay. And those abilities are, I think, some AoE ignoring for her elements too. So her cooldown abilities kind of unlock a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I guess it's a prize, New Year's prize, roulette kind of thing. Ah, whatever. Uh, 77 MP is her last cooldown ability. Single target, one hit, 1000% magic attack with a 200% modifier for a whole bunch of other abilities enables access to quadra casting on a three turn cooldown. So I think that uh, here there is, Fina does have a quite a few ways uh, it, to unlock multicasting for herself. Most of them are on her cooldowns though. And while one is on a three turn cooldown, one is on a six turn cooldown, there's definitely a pattern here that you want to kind of get into. And there is, you know, you kind of want to use all of her abilities that power up her passives and whatnot. I think that Fina is pretty damn good uh, on paper. She has a lot of passives that push her magic pretty damn high, too. Taking a look at mine, I have not actually maxed her out. I have not invested too many magic in her yet, but about 2007. 2,679, she should be able to reach 3,000 magic, which is pretty standard for a lot of the newer mages, such as Soul or the brand new CG Terra, who is a unit we'll take a look at soon enough. I mean, there's some good elemental resistance here. There's a lot of good support for the party as well. I think the Limit Burst is particularly strong. She has really good support to, to be a potential backup healer as well as damage healer. But in terms of chaining partners, who are her kind of Chaos Wave chaining partners? The one that I knew off the top of my head who was Chaos Wave chaining was X-Death. And X-Death actually has Chaos Wave chaining for her Earth, Dark, and Air. So, uh, Bofina here doesn't quite work for that. Terra, brand new uh, CG Terra, does, I believe, have Holy Chaining that is Chaos Wave. Uh, so, this girl could work very well with that, and that's also not a duplicate, which is kind of important for 15-man trials. Uh, the only other character that I can think of off the top of my head, and I just need to pull him up real quick to make sure. Ah, yes. Would be Soul. Soul is the other one who has Chaos Wave Chaining that is light-based damage. So Soul would probably work really well here, too. Um, I think that Soul's kit is more focused on... Well, no, I think there is some... Yeah, never mind. I'm looking at it. There is some good light chaining options there. So Soul could potentially be another good chaining partner. But uh, unfortunately, X-Death just doesn't match elements, which is a too bad. <coughs> anyway, uh, so let's kind of demo off. And we'll show off just uh, some of the chaining partners that she can do, as well as just some of the kit. All right, we brought Lena because I didn't think about it. So as you can see at the start of the fight, we have access to three abilities right from the get-go. So uh, let's just show off some of the smaller abilities first. You know, pretty damn decent damage if you consider that there's no modifiers, we haven't boosted her at all. And she, you know, did some healing to the party as well. Now let's, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> voice is dying. Uh, let's do some AR chaining, shall we? 
As everyone knows, I am a big fan of AR chaining. Dropping a little bit there, but it's perfectly fine. And to just demo off some Chaos Wave Chaining, even though it will not be, unfortunately, perfect Chaos Wave Chaining, uh, just because we are not matching the same elements, which, again, I find disappointing. Having gotten X-Death and having a particularly potential really good setup for X-Death, I'm a little sad that, unfortunately, the elements just don't match here. Why you no love me? All right, so here we go. You can see we get a nice bit of damage there. Without debuff, pretty strong. And then we can just kind of go in and... These are her damage stacking abilities. So these are the ones that will be just consistently getting better the more you use them up to a certain point. So again, let's see if we've maxed it out. No, it's still going up a little bit in my turn five. But we didn't unlock quadra casting there. Now, I do have a second copy, but unfortunately without her TMR, it's not going to work super perfectly and I'm not leveling up because my intention right now is just to get uh, her super TMR because I'm more interested in that than two copies. Oops, uh, we don't want to look at that. Let's go back in. So her special cooldown isn't going to give us really a heck of a lot of uh, help here. Uh, just because it... Uh, trying to think of what the actual term is. Uh, while it, 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 her... Ah, it's basically just a attack and magic boost, but since we're going to be just focusing on Fina this time, uh, we want to use her other cooldowns, especially the ones that unlock Quadra Casting for her. So let's uh, do the... believe we want to do her 77. Oh wait, those are on turn 3. Okay, then we have to use her turn 1. Okay, so we'll use that one to get off the, to a good start. Uh, we will do this one. This will power up her other abilities, and then we will debuff the enemy. I think we'll go the we'll go the holy route this time. Testing out some solo damage here. Also, I should mention that I just don't have any killers on Fina this time. As you can see, damage is stacking pretty nice. MP costs are getting a little bit high. And now, this is kind of the awkward turn where you just don't have access to some of her other stuff. Uh, you can still get a pretty high damage dealing magic attack here, but uh, it's a little sad that you kind of lose out a turn from her quadra casting. This is something that's just in general better about Terra that I've noticed. Terra kind of can keep, you know, or can really keep uh, quadra casting up the entire time. Fina essentially has a turn where she just can't kind of get it. So uh, let's just use So let's do this. This will unlock quadra casting, and we'll also get some nice damage. And optimally, you might want to just pass turn one and do something else. Here are her two stronger abilities. Now we've basically used up all of her, you know, special cooldowns. So let's see how much we do.
pretty nice for a solo outing. Now, again, this is the problem is that her quadra casting essentially only lasts for a single turn. Now, she does still have access to her other ability because it's a single use. So you could, in theory, keep that other ability. But as you can see, all of our cooldowns are kind of just gone at this point. Also, our holy debuff is gone, too. Whoops. Oh, well, I guess Lena wanted to get in on that. So, yeah. Uh, here's... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's a little bit more of a problem than I kind of initially thought. Not having quadra casting unlocked all the time makes her kit a tiny bit awkward, to say the least. It's not that it's bad. I think that it's actually still pretty powerful, and I think that she can get a fair amount of damage out. But the problem here really is just essentially that Fina's kit really kind of needs a way to unlock it more regularly than what it currently is getting. We'll also use Lena here because we want to demo off the limit first to end this, so... And see, that's what I mean. Like, I didn't even think about it at the, at the time that I was charging that limit burst. But um, I just didn't even remember right there to that I need to reset her abilities. Because she only has triple cast on turn one. Also, AR chaining seems to have issues on something. So, yeah, our limit bursts are all full now, but uh, we'll demo this off. Go for it. Pretty strong little magic attack. That also does something for the party. Unchained, too. And non-element. So, here's my thing about uh, Kyoto Fina. Uh, while her kit is generally pretty solid and definitely has support. She is not meant to be solely a magic damage dealer. She has quite a bit of magic damage power in her, but she's probably for a more slower drawn out fight. Uh, she does have, you know, good support for her own elements and everything like that. She definitely has some good abilities that I would want to have for supporting my party. Her random abilities, while they can dish out some uh, pretty damn amazing stuff, particularly uh, the 100% heal, are not essentially reliable. And the real problem here is there are mages that exist that can just have quadra casting constantly now. And that puts Fina just initially totally behind uh, compared to what some of the other mages can do. Not being able to constantly have quadra casting is a big problem here. And her cooldown abilities just don't necessarily aren't necessarily ever going to jive to the point where you're always going to be able to have quadra casting. Her abilities are strong, her support for herself and others is strong. But in terms of mages, I don't think that she will ever be necessarily a top tier damage dealer, nor should she be. That's not kind of what she is. So to end this review, just wanted to show off a party of Finas. Yeah. I actually have quite a few more Finas we can put in the party, but there you go. Anyway, so that's all for this time, and I will show next off, we'll be showing off Terra. So, see you then.